Chinese scholars and newspapers published articles predicting the 2024 U.S. presidential election, Biden is re-elected, Trump is eliminated, the Republican Party may come to power. And below is a series of analyzes given by Chinese scholars. We invite you to listen together, the United States is a country that implements a presidential system. Under normal circumstances, the presidential term is four years, and a presidential election is held every four years. The 2024 presidential election in the United States is on Tuesday, November 5, 2024. In April 2023, current U.S. President Joseph Biden stated that he had decided to run for re-election in the 2024 presidential election and announced his campaign plan. Democratic Party Biden defeated Republican Trump, who was looking forward to re-election, in the November 2020 presidential election. After the election results were confirmed in January 2021, he officially took office as the 46th President of the United States. The 2024 general election will determine whether he can be re-elected successfully. 1. Democratic Party campaign camp, the main focus is on having capable people and consistent policies. There are three Democratic candidates for 2024. 1. The current President Biden, who was born in November 1942, will be 82 years old in November 2024. Biden is the oldest presidential candidate in American history. After winning the 2020 election, Biden has not made it clear whether he will seek re-election. He knows that the Republican Party and the general public are very concerned about his health and mental condition. In April 2023, Biden officially announced that he would run for re-election. In the video released for his re-election campaign, Biden emphasized his success in five aspects. 1. Effectively curb domestic inflation in the United States without causing the economy to collapse. 2. Legislative victory in infrastructure, environmental protection, semiconductor technology, etc. 3. United NATO countries and maintained the rules of international law in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. 4. Fully implemented the comprehensive decoupling and suppression strategy against us, especially in the Taiwan Strait. 2. The second candidate of the Democratic Party is 70-year-old Williamson. She is a best-selling author and spiritual director. This is her second presidential election. In the 2020 campaign, Williamson focused on the two selling points of supporting economic reparations for African Americans, and Trump is an American mental illness that cannot be cured through political policies. The results were unsatisfactory. 3. The third candidate of the Democratic Party is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., 69 years old, and the nephew of former U.S. President John F. Kennedy. During the campaign launch, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s main point was that he would end the corrupt merger between government and corporate power. This main point was more catered to the lower class people in the United States, especially in the Midwest, too, Republican campaign camp, the main focus is to cast a comprehensive net control and guarantee, there are seven Republican candidates in 2024, more than twice the number of Democratic candidates, five, insisting that Trump is a national threat to the United States and launching a criminal prosecution against him. 1. The 77-year-old Trump officially announced as early as November 2022, he will run for President of the United States again. This is his third presidential election, and he is also the first former president in U.S. history to be impeached twice. Continue run for president, Trump's main point of view is that the United States is in decline, and his previous presidential term was the golden age of the United States. Trump clearly opposes the United States' strong support for Ukraine, claiming that if he succeeds in the election, he can end the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, too. Ron DeSantis, 45 years old, is the second-to-last youngest among the 11 candidates from the Democratic and Republican parties. In November 2022, he led his opponents by a huge advantage of nearly 20 percent and was successfully re-elected as the governor of Florida, DeSantis has not stated a clear position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. He focuses on economic reconstruction, decoupling from China, immigration security, abortion for citizens and other issues of greater concern in the United States. He is also regarded as Trump's biggest competition in the Republican Party. Bye.
However, in many current polls, his support rate lags behind Trump, and his popularity is even lower than Trump's. 3. Nikki Haley, 51, calls herself a member of the New Generation Leadership of the Republican Party. She is an American of Indian Sikh origin. She has served as a South Carolina representative, South Carolina governor, and also served as the United States Permanent Representative to the United Nations. Haley focuses on her life and upbringing as a descendant of Indian immigrants, but her electoral base has not been outstanding for a long time. 4. The 57-year-old Scott is relatively slow to take action. He only announced his official candidacy in May this year. He is the first African-American senator in South Carolina's history and the only African-American senator in the Senate, Scott's main focus, strengthening the U.S. military, completing the border wall on the southern border, combating drug trafficking and freezing the property of drug lords, and supporting the full return of manufacturing. Scott's campaign funding exceeds that of all other Republican candidates, but his poll numbers are ugly, they were still in the single digits as of July, 5. Asa Hutchinson, 72, announced his candidacy for president in April this year. He once served as the governor of Arkansas and is known as a Trump skeptic in the Republican Party. Hutchinson's main message, to get rid of cultural and ideological wars, the United States needs to return to its previous state of small government. As of July, Hutchinson's relevant data is not good either, he only received support from less than 1% of Republican voters. 6. Larry Elder, who is also 72 years old this year, is a conservative radio host who owns a program called The Larry Elder Show, with good ratings. Elder's stance is on the right wing. His main focus is on domestic affairs in the United States, such as supporting the elimination of the minimum wage, severe punishment of various criminal offenses, etc. 7. Ramaswamy, a 39-year-old multimillionaire, is the youngest among the 11 current candidates of the Democratic and Republican parties. He is also another Indian-American candidate. Ramaswamy's political popularity is considered to be far less than that of all other candidates, but Ramaswamy said confidently, although I am an outsider in the political circle, I think the identity of this non-traditional candidate will actually easier to resonate with voters. 3. The battle between Trump and DeSantis, knowing that the king will fail, Trump and DeSantis are both Republican candidates. In 2022, it was generally believed that the 2024 presidential election would see a fierce battle between Trump and DeSantis, the Republican Party and the candidates will fully dominate the general election. Looking at it now, this situation is unlikely to happen. On August 1, 2023, Trump was again criminally charged by Jack Smith, the special prosecutor of the U.S. Department of Justice, for allegedly trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The former president has been criminally charged for the third time since March 2023. Trump was previously sued for the hush money case and the confidential document scandal, but he expressed his innocence through his lawyer in both cases. The criminal charges in August were more serious, with a total of four charges against Trump. 1. Conspiracy to defraud the state. 2. Conspiracy to obstruct government procedures. 3. Obstruct or attempt to obstruct official proceedings. 4. Conspiracy to violate civil rights. This reminds people of another Republican president, Nixon, who resigned due to the Watergate incident in August 1974. Nixon became the first sitting president in the United States to resign voluntarily and had to be replaced by Vice President Ford, who was also a Republican. What's more important is that the current president, Biden, of the Democratic Party, is merciless to Trump and must be brought to justice quickly. Therefore, Trump will face two high-probability outcomes. First, he will eventually give up his candidacy in exchange for the withdrawal of criminal proceedings, which may be more decent. The other is to be found guilty and Trump will still be disqualified from the election. For Biden and the Democratic Party, there is still time. There is still one year before November 2024, but time is running out for Trump's criminal prosecution. It is speculated that there will be a result before the end of 2023, but this result is not certain. Trump would be very disadvantageous. The Republican Party has come up with a compromise, 
it wants to use Trump's extremely high popularity to support other Republican candidates, but it does not want to bear the possible, guilty verdict, of Trump. However, Trump deeply abhors signing a, good faith commitment, and explicitly refuses, what does this commitment from the Republican Party mean? After signing this pledge, if Trump can still participate in the election, no matter where he fails, he will need to unconditionally support other Republican presidential candidates, therefore, the fierce scene of 300 rounds of battle between Trump and DeSantis that the outside world had expected may not happen. Trump may even lose his qualification to run. The Republican Party is still trying to protect DeSantis and others. For Biden's desire to be re-elected, there is a high probability that it will not come true, Biden emphasized that he had achieved five successes during his term of office, one, effectively curb domestic inflation in the United States without causing the economy to collapse, two, legislative victory in infrastructure, environmental protection, semiconductor technology, etc., three, united, NATO countries and upheld the rules of international law in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, four, the Comprehensive decoupling and suppression strategy against us has been fully implemented, 5. Insisting that Trump is a national threat to the United States and launching criminal proceedings against him. We believe that it doesn't matter whether we believe in these selling points or not. The key is whether American voters recognize them, especially in Texas, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho and other places. The most fatal problems for Biden in terms of re-election are age, health and mental problems. So far, he has disclosed four of his health reports to the outside world, the most recent time was on February 16, 2023. Biden underwent a three-hour routine annual physical examination at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in the suburbs of Washington. Subsequently, the White House released a memorandum from the doctor in charge, Biden is still a healthy, energetic 81-year-old man who is still fit to perform the duties of the president. That means, believe it or not, it's up to you, but we believe it anyway, since Biden officially took office in January 2021, he has fallen asleep in meetings, lost his way after delivering a speech, fallen down when leaving the stage, holds his speech manuscript upside down from time to time, discovered that he recognized the wrong person after saying hello, etc. There are too many incidents, and he has earned a lot of ridicule. His nickname. The other case is Biden's son, 53-year-old Hunter Biden, who was charged with three counts and reached a plea agreement with the Department of Justice. Hunter pleaded guilty to two charges of failing to pay full income tax and possession of a firearm during a drug addiction. Hunter also has other scandals such as his private life being chaotic and being photographed. But Biden's attitude is, I am proud of my son. This will make the vast majority of the American middle class feel that Biden is rude, arrogant and unreasonable, although many family members of former presidents have been involved in legal incidents in the history of the United States, Hunter is the first child of a current president to be prosecuted. The Republican Party has always regarded Hunter as one of the main targets of attacking the Biden family and the Democratic Party. In this case, running for office at a super old age, his health being a mystery, and his son committing crimes and depravity are enough. No matter how outstanding Biden's achievements in foreign affairs, military and economic fields are, not only the traditional Republican base will insist on opposing Biden, but the traditional Democratic base will not be optimistic either, woo, the Democratic Party may lose, the Republican Party is likely to make a comeback things are not going well for the other two Democratic candidates, Williamson, 70, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., 69. After the two senior presidents Trump and Biden have served for a total of eight years, there will definitely be a big question mark as to whether Americans will continue to support senior or even super senior presidents. The U.S. presidents who have come to power in the past 30 years have done well in domestic reviews or treated us well after coming to power. They were all young when they were successful in the election. For example, Republican President George W. Bush, who treated us well after taking office, was 54 years old when he won the election in 2000. For example, Democratic Presidents Clinton and Obama, who have fairly good ratings in the United States, leaving aside their personal ethics, 
were 46 and 47 years old respectively when they successfully ran for the first time. This year's 45-year-old Republican candidate DeSantis is currently not as popular as Trump in the Republican Party, but Trump's situation is very dangerous and delicate. We have already talked about it before, so I won't go into details, the main content of DeSantis' campaign is still focused on us. This seems to be the common tactic and political correctness of American politics in the past 10 years or so. On July 31, 2023, DeSantis said in an interview, China is the number one geopolitical threat facing the United States and China's most favored nation trade status should be completely canceled. In fact, some of DeSantis's propositions and views related to ours, especially in terms of economic cooperation and global trade, are highly consistent with Trump. DeSantis also likes to emphasize the threat theory. He said his top priority if elected is take back control of the economy from our hands, prohibiting the import of goods so-called made using stolen intellectual property, prevent U.S. companies from sharing critical technologies with us, incentivize the repatriation of U.S. capital, fully decouple the U.S. economy from ours, reversing the U.S. trade deficit with us, etc. Among these six aspects, several are highly overlapping with the current policies of the Biden administration, therefore, if DeSantis succeeds in the 2024 election, his attitude and strategies towards us may be even more unfriendly and naked. Compared with the Democratic Party, the Republican Party will be more direct and will not be as good at outflanking as the Democratic Party. Conclusion, 2024 is not only an election year in the United States, but also an election year in India, Russia and other countries. Next year may be more lively. In particular, whether the Russia-Ukraine conflict can end in early 2024 and which side will have the upper hand will determine the outcome of the conflict. These will most likely affect the elections in various countries, especially those in the United States and Russia, generally speaking, looking at the 2024 U.S. election, Biden loses re-election, Trump basically has no chance, the Republican Party can make a comeback, etc., which are relatively high probability situations. The American people may recall, from 1981 to 1989, it was Republican President Ronald Reagan who led the United States to defeat stagflation and bring down another superpower, but no matter who comes to power, they will definitely face the following three things, 1, solve domestic inflation in the United States, boost the U.S. economy, and maintain the dominance of the United States and the dollar. 2. Whether to continue to support Ukraine and stick to this policy to the end of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. 3. Will the strategic suppression, military intimidation, economic decoupling and diplomatic isolation of us become intensified? In the end, these are predictions for the 2024 U.S. election based on limited information and personal analysis. Since it is a prediction, it must be very subjective. Everyone is welcome to use your own analysis and judgment to communicate and discuss together. Our video ends here, remember to subscribe so we can meet again in the next video, goodbye everyone.